for this is the day the Lord has made. We have come to rejoice and to be happy in it. Amen. So let's start off this service with a praise clap for our Heavenly Father, giving us just one more day on this side of Zion. I'm going to ask if you'll please stand for our call to worship listed in your bulletin. Here we are, Lord, your creature standing before you, gathered together to praise you and worship you. This is your day, Father, and we thank you for giving this day to all of us. Help us to always remember that each day is a blessing and a gift from you, for we are not owed anything from you. Be with us in our midst and let us feel your breath upon our faces and hold us close to you each day of our lives. Amen. Please be seated as we'll have um, a selection. everybody and praise the lord hallelujah anybody know that we serve a great god hallelujah he has done so many things for us does anybody just have a thank you in your spirit this morning is anybody really i mean come on sometimes we seem to forget how much god has really done i mean look at all 10 of your fingers look at the clothes that you're wearing look at the shoes that are on your feet think about the car that you drove here today and just think about how great our God is. How great is our God. Sing me how great is our God. No, see how great, how great is our God. If you know it, help me sing how great, how great. Is that? That's it. Come on, sing. Oh, is our God? Oh, see how great, how great is our God? Come on, sing it again. How great? Come on, you know it. Is our God? Sing me. Oh, he's a great God. Oh, we see how great, how great is our God, yeah. Oh, we praise him today, how great, oh, yeah. Sing with me, sing with me, how great is our God, oh, we see. How great, how great is our God. And this is the part I love, it says, You're the name above all names. You are worthy of our praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God oh, oh, give the name above all names you are worthy of all praise and my heart will sing how great is our God everybody say how great is our God say he's a great God oh how great is our God oh how great oh just say with me is our God to see how great is 
is our God. Oh, how great, how great. Yeah. Say with me. Yeah, Lord. Oh, we'll see. How great is our God. Come on, church. Woo! There's a God oh, we see. How great is our God. Hey, then sings my soul, my Savior God. To thee, how great thou art. Somebody lift those hands. How great thou art. Come on, help me sing. Then sings my, my Savior to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art Oh, this is it How great thou art Come on, he's a great God Give him a great praise Come on, I said a great God deserves a great praise Come on, a great God deserves a great praise Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for how great thou art. He is so worthy to be praised, church. And so as I was thinking about prayer for this morning service, I thought I would just do something just a little different. I, uh, came across something on Facebook that reminds me that opportunity knocks. It says God doesn't give us what we can handle. God helps us handle what we are given. Life is full of challenges, but did you know that with every challenge lies an opportunity for growth and success? And so I'm going to give you three scripture references that remind us to embrace challenges and seize the opportunities they present. So one challenge is fear of the unknown. And the opportunity is trusting in God's plan. For Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. It says, when faced with uncertainty, remember that God has a perfect plan for your life. Trust in his guidance, have faith, and step out of your comfort zone. Embrace the unknown, for it may lead you to incredible opportunities you never imagined. The second challenge, failure and setbacks. Opportunity is learning and resilience. From Psalm 37, 24 says, though he may stumble, he will not fail for the Lord upholds him with his hand. For failure is not the end. It's a stepping stone towards success. And every setback is an opportunity to learn, grow, and become stronger. So trust in God's support, pick yourself up, and keep moving forward. Remember, even in the face of failure, there are hidden opportunities waiting to be discovered. And then the third challenge, overwhelming obstacles. 
the opportunity, God's strength, and provision. From Philippians 4.13, I can do all things, yes, thank you, Jesus, through Christ who strengthens me. That when faced with seemingly unsurmountable obstacles, remember that you are not alone. With God's strength, nothing is impossible. So embrace challenges as opportunities to witness his miraculous provision and experience personal growth. Trust in his power and you'll find yourself overcoming challenges and seizing incredible opportunities. So, my friends, congregation, let's shift our perspective and embrace challenges as opportunities for growth, success, and a deeper connection with God. Remember, every challenge is an invitation to seize the opportunities that lie within. Trust in his plan. Learn from setbacks and rely on his strength where the possibilities are endless. And that was from your pastor on Facebook. And so as I was still, wherever he is, <laughs> downstairs probably. And so as I was still looking at things, I came across something that I always enjoyed hearing. And so if you yourself had the opportunity to introduce Christ, how would you do it? And so this particular comedian said, if I had the pleasure of bringing out Christ, this is just how I would do it. That ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce a man who needs no introduction. His credits are too long. He has done the impossible time after time. He hails out of a manger in Bethlehem, Jerusalem, by the way of heaven. For his daddy is the author of a book that has been on the best sellers list since the beginning of time. He fed 5,000 hungry souls with two fish and five loaves of bread. He can walk on water. He can turn water into wine. No special effects. No camera tricks. He has hailed the king. He has hailed the king of kings, ruler of the universe, omega and alpha, beginning and the end, the bright and morning star. So, church family, get up on your feet. Bring your hands together and show your love for the second coming of the one and the only. Our Heavenly Father, because God is so good. And we praise him and we thank him for yet another day. So we give him the glory. And Lord, we just thank you. We just ask right now, Lord, for your heavenly presence just to be here. Go from one bosom to the next, Lord, because we all stand in need. But Lord, we just come here ready to rejoice. We leave in the outside world on the outside of this church today. We come here to do nothing but to give you the praise and the honor that is truly due to nobody else but you. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for loving us so. We thank you for forgiving us, for you truly are our all in all. How great is our God. So we ask that you be with Pastor Sean this morning, Lord, as he brings the message to us that you have put on his heart for us to continually knowing you, continually having that relationship. And church, I pray that when it comes time for altar call today, that you just want to come and just say thank you, Jesus, just one more time. That he's given us the power to walk into this church. We may have bones that are aching, but we has given us the opportunity to walk in here as believers just one more time. He didn't have to do that. He didn't have to breathe life into us just one more time. But we thank you, Jesus, 
for just loving us so. So, Lord, we turn the service over to you. Have it be whatever it is that you want it to be, Lord. We thank you for Brother Palmer already getting us started off just right. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In his precious name, we all say amen, amen, amen. Please be seated. And just to let you know, that introduction was by the comedian Steve Harvey, if you haven't heard it before. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord again, everybody. Hallelujah. I mean, this morning, I was just focusing on how great God is. So um, can we have a little bit of church? Is that all right? Yeah. So growing up, we used to sing this song. God is great and greatly to be praised. Glory, glory to his name. God is great and greatly to be praised. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. God is great and greatly to be praised. Glory, glory to his name. God is great and greatly to be praised. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, clap your hands. God is great and greatly to be praised. Glory, glory to his name. God is great and greatly to be praised. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. God is great, greatly to be praised. Glory, glory to his name. God's great, greatly to be praised. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. I will bow before his majesty. I will lift my hands and sing. God is great, greatly to be praised. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, clap those hands, come on. That's why we came to have church this morning. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, we serve a mighty God. Hey, God, I used to say, have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried Jesus? Have you tried Jesus? Have you tried my Jesus? Have you tried Jesus? Have you tried my Jesus? Yes. Have you really? Have you tried him? Oh, have you tried him? He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. I tried him and I know he's all right. Yes, he is. He's all right, sir. I tried him and I know. I tried him and I know. He's all right, sir. He'll never fail. He won't let me down. He won't break my heart. He's all right, sir. He's all right, sir. Ow! He's all right. He's all right, sir. He's all right. He's all right, sir. Have you tried Jesus? He's Have you tried my Jesus? Have you tried Jesus? Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Somebody praise him.
I ain't ready to let that song go. Or really, we need some more. Somebody say he's all right. He's all right. Do you believe it? You ought to clap your hands, sir. He's all right. Oh, yes, he is. He's been a friend. He's been a way maker. He's a miracle worker, a provider. He's been a protector. He's lifted my soul. He calls me to get up. He's all right. Oh, he is. He's all right. You ought to praise him like he's all right. I find no fault. He's all right. Oh, yes, he is. All right. He's all right. He's all right. Oh, he's all right. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's all right. All right. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. That's why I praise him. That's why I sing. That's why I can shout. That's why I dance. Cause he's all right. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. Have you tried Jesus? Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Yeah. How many of you really know that he is all right? Amen. Amen. He gets us over so many trials and tribulations, which only makes us stronger in the faith. He's all right. He's all right. Amen. 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 And so we truly welcome everyone that's in service uh, this morning. It's always so good to see Sister Susan come in the door this morning. Amen. Sister Mildred, we've been missing her and so good to see her. And then, oh, Sister Bootsy in the house. So we're so good to just see everyone this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So just briefly uh, in your announcements, um, again, I'm trying to give you guys the calendar of events to keep us updated so uh, you can look at that. The main thing for uh, this week for, can you believe we're going into August? <laughs> so on Tuesday will be our administrative board meeting uh, through Zoom and um, so that's the main one that we have for this week. The other ones please put on your calendar uh, and remember also that for the end of um, this month, August, is our back to school a giveaway. We do have envelopes for that. But even more importantly, today is our last day for the scholarship fund drive. So as a reminder that when we do our mission offering today, that entire mission offering will go towards the scholarship fund. And we can see on the board here, it is creeping up. We're getting closer and closer to 2000. So we'll see what we get today. I might just need to extend it maybe to another Sunday so we can reach that goal. But we are so thankful for everybody that has contributed thus far and will be able to contribute today also. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, also, oh, I can do that next week. Please also keep in your prayers all of those that are listed on our sick and shut in this. Uh, Brother Alex, Liddell Bell, Bertha, Brother Ike, um, Paula, and Bobby Brown, and then the others of our church family that, um, <coughs> excuse me, that are there through our Zoom network. And then we have an anniversary coming up on August the 2nd. Saiwan and Pam Moore. And how many years, which one of you want to tell it? Amen. Amen. We love it when the men step up. Amen. 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 And then also this week on um, August the 5th is the anniversary of Wilson and Estelle Williams, and they join us through Zoom. So I listed the um, addresses in there in case if you'd like to send any cards. 
and then on the back of your calendar of events, you will, you will see the birthdays and the anniversaries for the month of August. Amen? Amen. 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 And just to let you know, we have a, I see a new tech guy sitting at the back. Uh, Brother Gilbert, we thank him. For, <laughs> we thank him. Uh, Brother uh, David um, is working over at New Destiny Church. They're helping us to get um, the technical part of our streaming it all together. So they have been gracious enough to have him come over and see how that media team works. So some of those ideas can be brought back so that we can create a wonderful media team here for Buttonwood Church. Amen? Amen. 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 Pastor, do you have anything before I go on? Okay. Um, so with that, uh, with no other announcements, we'll go right on into our offering. Again, reminder that our mission offering will go towards scholarship drive. And so if you'll just bow your heads for the prayer. God of all blessings, Jesus inspired us through his teaching to see your kingdom as a place where small things can have a mighty impact. A tiny mustard seed planted or a bit of yeast mixed into the flour. We ask you this day to bless our gifts we offer so that they may have a powerful impact when used according to your purposes. Bless us that we might see glimpses of your kingdom through our giving and grow in generosity in the process. In the name of Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer, we pray. Amen. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come, when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come, when we go. We cast out every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. He's going to work in your favor. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. He's going to work in your favor. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. He's going to work in your favor. Whoa, whoa. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. He's going to work in your favor. Oh, God's going to turn it around. He's going to. thank all of you also that have already given through cash app it comes on my phone right away so i just thank you so much as well uh, we're going to go into our gospel lesson reading for this morning's service um, i do ask you to please stand for the gospel lesson that will be coming from matthew 13 verses 31 through 33 and then verses 44 through 52 amen the first is the parables of the mustard seed and the yeast, just what we were talking about in our offertory prayer. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. 
Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. And then 44 through 52, the parables of the hidden treasure and the pearl. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all, the, all that he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. The parable of the net. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things, Jesus asked? Yes, they replied. He said to them, therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. For this is the word of the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. And we'll be blessed with another song. Hallelujah. Anybody remember when I said, got up here, said for how great a God he is? And remember when I said, look at all 10 of your fingers and look at the clothes that you're wearing. I, I, we have so much to be thankful for. Um, if you'll allow me to have my brief testimony. I remember in 2019, I was up singing and I began to get really, really tired. And I, uh, I, you know, I couldn't finish the song. I could halfway get through the song. And I was like, oh my gosh, why am I so tired? And then my ankles were really, really big and they had uh, swelled. And my son said, oh my gosh, your, your legs are really big. So I went to the emergency room to the hospital. And they told me, Mr. Palmer, we want you to sit down and be quiet. Don't say anything. You're having a heart attack right now. And when I think about how bad things are, but guess what? Things could really be worse. And as if that wasn't enough, this year I was diagnosed with stage five kidney failure. And now I have to do dialysis. So I have to sit in a chair three times a week for four hours. But guess what? I still have a thank you in my spirit. Why? Because I'm living with what so many people have died from. I'm living with what other folks have died from. So if you have no, no, no other reason to thank God, can you thank God for me this morning? Come on, can you thank God for your neighbor? Can you thank God for your family? I said, does anybody have a thank you in their spirit? Come on, lift your hands and tell them thank you. Come on, lift your hands and just tell them how good he is. Come on, I wouldn't want to be in a relationship with somebody that doesn't speak to me. Come on, tell them thank you. Tell them thank you if you're grateful. When you say thank you, it provokes the person to do more for you. So I say, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Come on, help me. Thank you, Lord. Come on, I mean this. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. I just, I just want to say thank you, Lord. Come on, if you're grateful, say thank you, thank you. Lord, for everything you've done, I thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord. Oh, you've been good. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you. Oh, Lord. And I just, I just want to thank you, Lord. And this is why we thank him. Oh, you've been so good. So good. Even when I was not good to myself. Lord, you've been, been so, so good. Every day of my life, Lord, you've been so, so good. And for that reason, Thank you, Lord. Not only that, but you made a way. Made. Yes, Lord. When I had more bills than I had money, you made a way. You made a way. You parted the Red Sea for me, and you made a oh, you made a way, and I just, I just want to, I just want to say. Oh, you've been so good. I don't take anything for granted, but I just want to say. I just want to say. I just want to say. I just want to thank you, Lord. Come on, tell him thank you. song just said do let's just give God thanks on today thank you God for who you are and for what you are in our lives how many grateful people do we have on today amen I just thank God for who he is and what he is uh, to me we are living in a day where it is important for us to understand God's love because the world's not going to give you love. We can see in our society, in the news, how uh, what we're missing is not political side. What we're missing isn't a Republican or a Democrat, but what we're missing is love. Come on now. It's just simple as that. You know what I mean? When, 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 when you're showing someone love, I believe that uh, things look a little different than what they look now. Amen? Amen? Bow your heads with me. Father, we just give you praise today. We give you glory for who you are. We thank you because in spite of our situations, we understand and realize that you are still God. You're God over this earth. You're God over the United States. You're God over every country. You're God over every situation. You just, you're, you're, you're just God. God is. What is God? God, you are everything that we need on today. So be with us today, Father. It's preaching time, Father. And we pray today, God, that someone... Uh, may get what they need from the word of God, that they may be edified today, that you may be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. We're going to continue down this path in Romans. And Romans 8, 
uh, verses 26 to 39. Verses 26 to 39. We're going to uh, go with. If you don't mind, I need to sit down today. Y'all sitting down. <laughs> Yo, you know, people start to look at you funny. The pastor's sitting down. Wait, well, aren't y'all sitting down? I can't sit with y'all today. <laughs> All right, Romans 8, 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. See, back in the day, you say something like that in the church, boy, it disrupt the whole service. They'd be running all over the place. <laughs> that knowing that all things work together. Come on, y'all. For those whom we foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that we might be the firstborn within a large family. And those who, predest who he predestined, he also called. And those who he called, he also justified. And those who he justified, he also what? Glorified. glorified. Oh, y'all ain't going to talk to me. I'm going to be here for a while. I'm sitting down today. He also what? Glorified. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is what? Against us. Y'all know that. Come on now. He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will not, will not with him also give us everything else. Who will bring any charges against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to, to condemn? It is Jesus Christ who died. Yes. Who was raised? Who is at the right hand of God? Who indeed intercedes for every last one of us? Who will separate us? From the love of Christ, will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, as it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep. To be what? Slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced, everybody say I'm convinced, I'm convinced. that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation. That sounds like everything to me, don't it? Yes. Shall what it says, it, it said we'll be able to separate us from the what? Love. Love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I mean, we could close the book and go home right there. <laughs> But I want to talk to you just for a couple moments about the power of God's unfailing love. The power of God's unfailing love. I mean, I had plenty of people that I thought I was in love with. 
Yeah, how many ever thought they was in love with somebody? Come on, y'all. You know. I love you, girl. You know, y'all up talking on the phone all night. You hang up. No, you hang up. And you thought you thought you thought you loved them. You thought their love was unfailing till one day they said, I quit you. <laughs> y'all know where y'all you remember that kid stuff? I quit you. <laughs> and that love seemed to have failed you. But how many know that God's love is consistent? He looks beyond all your faults. He looks beyond all the things that you do and have done. He looks beyond the times that you told God, I can't believe that you did this to me. And I don't want to have nothing to do with you because we all done, done that in our life. And if you're going to sit here and tell me that you haven't, you lying to me right now. All the times that, that you wondered, is there really a God? And he said, I'm still going to love you through it. Amen. Come on now, am I talking to somebody on today? Amen. So today we want to reflect on this scripture and this passage. And, and, and we want to be reminded how God's love is unfailing. And, and, and how we can be assured that these promises that he has given us in this book that we call the B-I-B-L-E, and we say, that's the book for me, you know? <laughs> we, we, he, he given us these promises that we can be assured that, that, that anything that comes up against us, his love can conquer all of it. So let us kind of, we're going we're gonna to get into this on, on, on today a little bit. Um, Kate, can you do me a favor? In my bag on the seat in there, I have my uh, towel. Y'all know I'll I be sweating up here. <laughs> um, we have to first understand uh, in Romans uh, 8 and 26 and verse 27, uh, Apostle Paul, he highlights these, uh, these roles of what the Holy Spirit is in our life. And y'all know we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. And if you uh, are, are, are a believer, you, you, you all need to have the what? Holy Spirit. Because if you don't have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is that thing that leads, come on now, and guides you. And if, the Holy, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can't be what? Led and guided. That's my GPS. Come on now. I was coming back. I had to go to... Uh, to uh, King of Prussia to a conference last night and um, play. And on my way back, I, I, I was with an old friend. They, they asked uh, for our, our, our reunion team to come together and do something. And on the way back, um, my, my, my boy, he got in the car. He was, he was, uh, he was driving, and he was like, uh, he just started driving. And I said, uh, he said, man, I think we turned right here. He kept on, I said, we ain't got a thing. We got a what? GPS. <laughs> All you got to do is type in this address and just follow what, okay, and follow whatever it says. Our problem is we're not following what God says. God tell us to go to the right. We want to do our whole thing and we go to the left. God says to do this and we'll do something else. Everybody say, I will follow Holy Spirit. I will follow Holy Spirit. So, thank you so much. So we find that this Apostle Paul, he highlights this role of what the Holy Spirit is. And he reminds us when we are weak that we can pray to God. And the spirit intercedes for us. Yes. And, and in one version, it says with groanings. Come on now. Yes. And groanings too deep that words can't even be uttered. This reminds us that God knows our hearts immediately. Do you know that before you actually sit down, to pray to God that he already know what you was going to say. Amen. Uh, I, 
He knows every situation that you're going through. He understands everything that you're going through. So before you even said, he just wants you to come love on him. Uh, you know, when you're in a relationship, that person just sometimes wants you just to love on them. Yeah. They just want you to, 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 to come hug them. Come on now. You know what I mean? Just be a part. And see, immediately, he understands all of our deepest needs. I'm talking about the stuff that I don't talk to people about. The secrets of my hearts, he knows. And here is the thing about what the Holy Spirit is. And if you're writing, write this down. The Holy Spirit is our advocate. Ah, oh, man, y'all didn't hear me. He's our advocate, helping us to communicate with God even when we what? Lack the words. So when we don't know what to say, the Holy Spirit says it for us. Come on now. Romans 28 and 30 goes on to say that God works all things for the good. Paul continues by assuring us that God works everything for the good, but it's contingent upon one thing. Those that love him. Because some of us are just churchgoers. We don't really love God. Oh, that hurts right there. <laughs> we, 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 love, we love Buttonwood, but do you love God? Y'all hear me? Uh, you, 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 love, you love United Methodist, but do you love God? Because guess what? United Methodist, Buttonwood, none of them can do what God's love can do for you. And I'd rather have his love than to have anything else. It's God's love. This doesn't mean that everything just happens and everything that does happen to us is good. I don't know about you, but I had a lot of bad stuff that has happened in my life. But rather that God can bring good out of every situation. I used to say back in the day, and I started coining it again, I, I, I don't have bad days. I just have things that happen that are bad within the day. Because every day that you wake up in the morning and you breathe breath, that's a good day. Look at somebody and say, good day. Good day. <laughs> uh, Sister Siobhan that sings with us every time, and y'all keep her in prayer. She lost uh, a, a dear uh, uh, brother, Gizzy, uh, in, uh, which is Raymond Stairsbury. If you, you know him, he, he's very well known in, in, in the city. And she, she, that was his, her, I believe his uncle. And he, that was, and that family is very tight. She'll text me and Siobhan to say, great morning. <laughs> so one day, she, she always, she's been saying this to me for a long time. So one day I said, why do you say great morning? She said, because every morning that you wake up should be great. If we serve a great God, guess what? We have a great what day. So God can bring good out of any situations. He can find comfort in knowing that even in our dark moments, he is shaping us and molding us into his image. He has called us according to what? His purpose. Not my own, but what? His purpose. The Bible declares, this is the great part about this, boy. I wish I, wish I, I, I had the strength to do it today because I would run because it says, it says, he says, he has called us according to his purpose and nothing can separate us from his love. 
I mean, once you connected with him, you can you can tell him you don't love him, but he's gonna love you anyway. You can say I don't want to have nothing to do with you, but I want something to ha- I want to have something to do with you. Come on now. Y'all mess somebody like that, they just get on your nerves. They just keep on coming around. And you just, you ain't got no other choice but to keep on loving them. <laughs> y'all, y'all, come on. Y'all, y'all had some people like that in your life. You're like, these people, boy, they just, you know. <laughs> so nothing can separate me from. So that means that every situation that I go through in life, there is no barrier to how God's love or how far God's love will go for me in my life. Because God's love is ultimately unfailing. I mean, his love for me is literally unfailing. In this final section of this scripture, Romans 8, verses 31 through 39, Paul emphasizes that we have a bond with Christ that is unbreakable. God and his children, he asked, if God is for us, Who can be against us? Why don't you ask your neighbor that? Say, if God is for us, us, who can be against us? us? This question reminds us, no matter what challenges that we face in our lives, we have the ultimate victory in Christ over everything that you have been through. That means that every time that you feel like things are going wrong, you can reflect back to this scripture and say, I still have the victory. Every time you feel like people have walked out on you, you can reflect back to this scripture and say, I have the what? Victory. I got the victory over those crazy people on my job. Come on now. I got the victory over those crazy people at my church. Come on now. I got the victory over those crazy people in my family. Come on. I got the victory over those crazy kids. Come on now. I got the victory over my finance. Come on now. Talk to me, y'all. I got the victory over my emotions. I got the victory over everything in my life. Because of who loved me. I mean, if God be for us, who? You could preach right there on who. (laughs) Who? I mean, nothing, nothing, nothing. My fear of dogs, who? I was out the other week and somebody, they didn't know I didn't, I didn't care for dogs. You know, I'm not a dog lover. Uh, I have a fear of dogs. I, and, and, and usually I, they, bring, they bring that dog in, you know, Sean Lee is peering on, he out of here. <laughs> I, I'm running, jumping on tables and restaurants and everything, y'all. I'm going with <laughs> by any means necessary. <laughs> this dog comes in. I don't care how big the dog is. It can be chopped to wild, but I don't care. Listen, <laughs> if it got teeth, it bites. <laughs> and the dog comes in, and I just sit there. And I, and I was with my cousin, my, my cousin Kim Graham. And Kim said, Kim said, oh, Lord. <laughs> she said, you're going to get over this spirit through the day. The devil is alive. <laughs> dog comes in. He, he sniffs me out. I'm still sitting there. And we fired the whole night, y'all. We, we, we in there chilling. Then later on in the evening, we sitting outside. And a, and a car comes by. And I'm, I'm, sitting, I'm sitting right here, and the dog's right here. 
Dog come to me, rah, 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 like that, barking. But the dog wasn't barking at me. It was the tires of the car that was coming by. I jump up. I said, uh oh, it's time to go. <laughs> that fear comes in. The scripture says, hey, <laughs> who can separate me? Come on, Daddy. <laughs> yeah, man. And it says, if God is for me, nothing can be against me. Man, that, 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 that should, should make your week uh, uh, a better week. Because every week you're going to face a challenge in your life. Every week you're going to face Something that 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 goes wrong. Nothing is ever perfect. And what challenges we face, we have to ultim- ultimately say that we have this victory over. But Paul goes on to list various potential threats to our faith, such as tribulation, distress, persecution or even death. However, uh, he also declares that none of these things are going to separate us from the love of God. Come on now. Nothing shall separate me from that love of God. In my closing, as we conclude this teaching, I want us to reflect on this message of Romans. Romans 8, 26 through 39, and when you get a chance at home, uh, why don't you read it on this week? Reflect on, see, I keep on telling y'all, and, and see, God don't have me, God, I don't, I don't just, Say uh, frivolous stuff. If God, you know, you know well, yes, I do. But uh, <laughs> let me stop lying. You know what I mean? <laughs> but when God starts speaking to me, He has me say stuff over and over and over and over. And and when God starts speaking, we 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 got we got to we got to be home in this book, y'all. Y'all hear me? There will come a time where we don't have this word and you got to have it in your heart. So as we close, we're reminded that, number one, the Holy Spirit, he intercedes on our behalf. He's our advocate. Everybody say, he's my advocate. God's ability to work all things for our good is working for our good. Don't forget there is an unbreakable bond between God and his children. I mean, no matter, me me and my son, we've been falling out back and forth for years, and no matter what, it's an unbreakable bond because guess what? No matter what he does or, or what I do, guess what? He always going to come back. He's always going to say, Dad, I'm always going I'm, to, I'm always there with my hands wide open. I don't care what he does in life. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? And when you don't have kids, you don't understand that love sometimes. That love, that love that he gives me, boy, you know, it, 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 I mean, that I give it to him, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Now, he can smack me, but he's going to get hurt. But, <laughs> but even if he smacked me, that love is still going to be there. Y'all understand what I'm saying to you? That's the kind of love that God has for us. Man, many times that I said, Lord, I, I, I'm sold out for you. I won't, I won't turn back on you, Lord. 
Then next thing I know, I'm doing something I shouldn't do. He said, I don't care. I love you unconditionally. So in times of weakness, let us remember to lean to Holy Spirit. Knowing that he intercedes for us in times of uncertainty. Let us trust in God's sovereignty. In God's unlimited love. Knowing that he is working all things for our good. And in times of trial, let us hold on to the unshakable truth that nothing can separate us from the love of God. This week, may this passage serve as a constant reminder of God's unfailing love and his assurance that we have in his promises to us. On today, let us go forth as we leave today from this place knowing that his love strengthens us and encourages us knowing that we are more than a conqueror through him who loved us. Amen. 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 Father, we give you praise today that your love strengthens us. It encourages us. And we understand today that we are more than a conqueror. So we surrender all today to you. Because without you, we are nothing. Without you, we would fail. We would be like that ship that's without no sails. You know, so Father, thank you for not failing us even when we failed ourselves. Thank you because when we said yes and then went back on our word, you didn't go back on your word. So as we humbly come to you, we ask you first to forgive us for being unfaithful to your word. Forgive us for being unfaithful to our love towards you. It's your love that can conquer a multitude of sin. So we thank you for your love on today and your grace towards us. Oh, to Jesus, I surrender all to freely. I will ever love. I'll love him. Come on. What's that song say? Yeah. Let's lift our voices big and say, I surrender all. And I surrender all. The altar is open. I anybody that wanted to surrender to his love on today meet me at the altar oh. 
One more time, lift up voices big. With your heart, sing, I surrender all. I surrender all, yeah. Hallelujah. I surrender all. All. Just play it for us, Joe Bree. Meditate as Joe Bree, please. I surrender all. Yes. Hallelujah. Over to your name, Jesus. Yes. Father, we don't know why each individual is here at this altar on today. But what we do know is that your love has drawn them to come closer to you. Just a little closer walk with thee. So, Father, as we are walking closer with you, we thank you because everyone that is gathered here at the altar knows that your love does not fail them. Your love does not fail them. And because you, your love does not fail, fail us, we will draw closer to you, Father. I don't know what they may be going through on today. Some may be in the midst of trials. Some may be in the midst of tribulation. But the Bible declares that nothing shall separate us. So that means no matter what you're going through in life, we are not separated from you. And we thank you. For the strength that you give us in the time of need. And it's in your name we pray. Let every heart say, I surrender all. I surrender. before we go and I surrender I about to go home I want to leave you with this last point that although 
God's love is unfailing and unconditional. Don't abuse God's grace and love. Because what happens sometimes when we know that we can get away with stuff, guess what we do? We'll push the envelope. You know, you push, you know, the first time you get away with something, then the second time you see if you go a little bit further and see if you go, no, let God's love just be within you. Let the church say amen. amen. Let's stand on our feet. Thank you today for those that have gathered here with us. Thank you for everything that we have learned on today, Father. And we pray that even as we are going our separate ways on this week, that we, that this scripture will uh, come back up in our life, Father, to know that nothing shall separate us from your love, Father. To know that you're walking by our side in every step of the way. So, Father, we give you praise. We give you thanks for who you are and what you are. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Let every heart and every mind say, Amen. Amen. Every heart say, Amen.